Why isn't there a Photoshop of interactive filmmaking? By which I mean, why isn't there a go-to program that's so synonymous with the process of making interactive films that we immediately associate that specific program with the medium? Could it be that all the current software just sucks? <laughs> Put it a bit more charitably, of the many different options that exist right now for making interactive movies, all of them have distinct strengths and weaknesses. In this video, I'm going to look at the most popular solutions for interactive filmmaking and some oddball suggestions to explaining these strengths and weaknesses as I go, considering which platforms might be best for what type of person, and then ultimately suggesting which platform I think is the best one out there today. To test each software, I made the same short public service announcement style film in each platform and compared my notes on the experience. My film is kind of depressing and more than a little bit juvenile, but it has a few options, some music and some handy camera work, compliments of my gimbal. There's nothing wrong with a drink every now and again, but it's important to recognize. Let's get to the reviews. The first software platform to consider using for interactive filmmaking is really simple. No software whatsoever. If you're trying to make an interactive film that's integrated into a website or easily available online, it's quite easy to do so with little programming know-how. When I say no software, what I mean is making a basic web page using some simple programming techniques, using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. To make mine, I first compressed my video footage down nice and small so it would load quickly. I uploaded my file files onto GitHub, then I followed a few tutorials on w3schools.com on how to make the background of a web page into a video file and how to make some interactive buttons out of boxes. In all, I'm currently okay with the film. Getting it to the state that it's at right now took just about an evening. On the plus side then, Programming an interactive film is, well, completely free. It provides you with additional knowledge of programming for the web. And being free right now is important as currently even the most sophisticated interactive filmmaking software really only offers basic functionality that you could more or less make yourself this way. They do provide user interfaces that you're not going to have here, um, but I honestly felt, as you'll see in a little while, that sometimes the user interfaces kind of complicated things. On the negative side then, of course, this is a more complex way of making an interactive film. You will need to learn how to program at least a little bit, and that's no joke. This way of working could take up to months depending on your level of skill. What's more, coding changes all the time, so a feature that you develop today might not work with the same web browser tomorrow. In all then, let's give programming your own interactive film a 6 out of 10. If you're someone with lots of time and a thirst for knowledge, or else somebody who knows how to code already, making your interactive film with HTML and JavaScript is probably a good option. Otherwise, Let's keep looking. One step up from doing it yourself is doing it with Twine. Making a similar interactive film experience to the one that I programmed myself in HTML. Well, doing so in Twine, I used the browser version of Twine, provided links to my GitHub videos as before, and similarly kind of put it together on my own Steam. On the plus side for me, Twine is completely free and provides a straightforward user experience that I imagine would be great to use if you're working on, say, a larger film with lots more branching narrative paths. But on the negative side, working with Twine, there were times where I felt it would just be easier to do it myself through HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The version of Twine that I was using was called Harlow, which doesn't have audio support, so I needed to come up with some code workarounds myself. There are other versions of Twine that support this, but uh, I had to ask myself, would it just be easier doing this with HTML? In conclusion then, I think that Twine is a solid 7 out of 10. It's a great programming experience if 
programming from scratch is a little too intimidating, but you're not afraid to dig deeper if you have to. On to the next one then, Echo Studio. Echo Studio is the first professional software platform I'm going to look at, and it's designed explicitly for interactive filmmaking. Making my interactive film in Echo Studio was, in all honesty, kind of a dream come true compared to the others, as I was able to just simply upload my clips onto the platform website itself. I didn't need to use GitHub to store my clips. I could then just work on the video all within my browser window really simply with zero programming needed. The questions had a built-in timer that animated, it generated a sense of pacing and energy to my film that wasn't there with the other versions. A big plus here was that unlike my experience with the other platforms so far, Echo also works seamlessly on mobile. Now again, this is something that I could figure out in Twine and in HTML if I had enough time and patience, but here it was all done for you, which is great. On the flip side of this, Echo Studio does rely on building a sort of self-contained game when you export, rather than building a website or something into HTML that you can easily embed into things that you own. So you're always kind of dependent on Echo. What's more, Echo Studio's pricing and support structure is kind of weird. On the one hand, it sort of seems like Echo Studio is free, which is awesome, but Echo have another product which is geared a lot more towards advertising, and that's definitely not free, or at least you need to pay if you're a more professional client, um, otherwise you get 50 free videos. The another thing that is worth noting is it hasn't been updated since 2018, so while Echo Studio is great, I wonder how long it's going to be great for. I think Echo Studio gets an 8 out of 10 for me, even with its glaring issues. I think that if you're the kind of person that needs to build a robust interactive film for a specific event or a one-off client, you need it to look professional and to work across multiple platforms, Echo Studio is a no-brainer, but I will say you should really be doing this now before it's too late. I think because Echo Studio is cloud-based with little to no way of getting your project off their platform and seemingly few updates coming from them, you might kind of be held ransom at some point in the near future. So do use it, but use it soon. Another extremely popular solution for making interactive videos online is Stornaway.io. Making an interactive film in Stornaway was about as easy and enjoyable as in Echo Studio, although it has to be said the patented Story Island system that they use is genuinely really easy and fun to just play around with. It helped me to formulate my ideas and structure them in a more intricate way. As with Echo Studio, Stornaway requires you to work online and there's little to no way to work on your project without using their browser-based platform. And this personally makes me a little uncomfortable, but your mileage may vary. For me, one of the weird limitations with Stornoway is the lack of ability to play constant backing tracks throughout different clips. I just couldn't see why this was missing, as it was a feature that was present in Echo Studio. Stornoway instead relies on all of the music being encoded onto the individual video clips that you're going to upload, uh, meaning that there's slight jumps if you're trying to use consistent background music between different clips. Stornoway is also limited to a pretty consistent 14-day trial. After that, they expect you to pay $10 a month. Now, personally, to me, this seems a little crazy, especially when simple functions like backing tracks are missing right now. However, they do try to promote Stornoway as kind of more of a working platform space for you to think about scripts, and they offer a Unity plugin as well, but it still seems a little steep to charge $10 a month. I think if you're seriously invested in making interactive film, Stornoway does seem like a sensible choice given the lasting support it appears to have, but you're going to be hoping that they're going to add some new features soon. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind that Stornoway is built off of the remnants of YouTube's old interactive film capability, so I think at the minute it's still just a little bit limited, but maybe bright things are in the future. For now, 6 out of 10. Before wrapping up, I want to throw in a couple of wildcard options that you might not consider when making interactive film, and the first one is the Unity game engine, with its ability to fully support music and video. In many ways, Unity should be the obvious choice, as not only is it 
it a thriving platform. It's also free up until your game makes a certain amount of profit and learning how to use it can open the door to many things. I build games in Unity and honestly I think my career in academia has as much to do with my Unity games as it does with my doctoral thesis. Finally I want to suggest using PowerPoint as a possible tool for interactive films, though maybe only as a last resort. Although it offers limited support for working with video, it is possible and it presents a kind of familiar face to consumers. So while it's maybe not a go-to, I do think it's something to bear in mind if you're stuck and you need to put together a video presentation with some interactive options. Always remember the PowerPoint is there and just be sure that you export to CD. In conclusion then, with the current slew of programs, this all kind of suggests that it's just as important that you know what type of interactive film you want to make and for what purpose before you choose a platform to rely on. In an ideal world, if I was doing a project for, say, university, where the journey was more important than the destination, or if I was beginning a project from scratch, had no time constraints, and wanted to learn some transferable skills, I think the go-to choice is really to use no platform at all, program it yourself or at least use Twine or Unity where you get some experience of, of programming and customization. On the other hand though, if you have limited time or maybe you're working for a professional client, go for Echo or maybe Storm Away at this stage. But I think better options will come along the line or Storm Away will be updated into something much more impressive soon. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below or in the Padlet Attached.